All right, yo. Whoa. It's weird. I feel like I'm hella loud. It's been so quiet in my room. Anyways, episode six, I believe. Six? Six. Six, six, six. I don't know. It's episode six, I believe, of Fixing Warzone. This one, it's probably not going to be crazy long, so I'm also going to try and maybe add in a few tips here and there about what lethals and what tacticals you should be using if you are a certain type of player on top of fixing those two categories so it's kind of gonna gonna kind of kind of gonna be a little bit of a double whammy uh let's see what we're looking at here we got your your classic lethals i'm gonna rank them i believe so we have one two three four five six seven eight options i'm not going to include any of these throwing knives because they are literally just cosmetics for the throwing knife. Contrary to popular belief, for some noobs, they think that when you kill them with a flaming throwing knife that it like does some more damage or something weird. It's really, I don't know. People fall for a lot of shit in this game, besides the point. So we're gonna go from worst to best in your last place. We have the one, the only, the proximity mine literally the only time i have ever seen the proximity mine being used is when you find one off of the rip you toss it down on a buy station or in a random doorway once you find an actual lethal that you feel like using other than that yes you see the occasional vehicle kill but even then nobody is running proximity mine in their loadout they're more so just finding them tossing them down onto the street you eventually will maybe get lucky with it, I don't really know. There's no real use for it in this game, although in theory, it's supposed to kind of watch your back if you have one, but I don't really think they should be any better than they are because of the sheer fact that if you have a lethal that watches your back and can potentially kill somebody, that's kind of overpowered as opposed to the other lethals. Plus, if you're playing solos, it's kind of like having two players. We're gonna move on to the Claymore, which is basically just a better version of the Proximity Mine other than when it comes to high armored vehicles. I don't think a Claymore kills the big truck or a SUV. I think it kills the regular car and I think for sure it kills the ATV. But honestly, most people use these again, just like the proximity mine. They pick them up off the rip, put them down in a dark doorway or a popular area, hope to get some damage with it. I almost never see anybody dying to these, especially because you are almost always full armor in this game. People make it a priority to stay topped off in their health bars. That way, little things like this that are more so of an annoyance can't kill them. You could make the argument to give the claymore more damage. I honestly don't think I would do it sheerly because you don't want people just putting down two of these, getting a free easy kill every time, running restock, running scavenger, running ammo boxes, running just you imagine quads with eight claymores. Like how fun would that be? Moving on, it gets a little more difficult. I would say I'm gonna have to go with throwing knife, even though some people make good use of it. The problem with throwing knife is that I only ever really see one good option for it. You could argue two, but the second option I'll go a little more into detail on after I explain the regular use. So if you're a regular player and you're playing anything more than solos, you can rush in. You can down a bunch of people and your throwing knife is basically your quick finish. It's your ability to make sure that nobody puts a self revive off or honestly just making sure that you get the kill and you don't have to worry about one out of the three or the four that you're going after. You run in, you throw the knife down on them if they're downed, get the kill, run over their body, you pick the knife up, you go at it again. It's actually not bad in that sense, you'd be surprised, but that's more so for the high skilled player. The only other option, the second one that I was talking about, is if you're rocking that nerd loadout like Riot Shield with some kind of weird secondary and stun grenades with the throwing knife and restock. It's actually quite effective if you practice it for some reason and you have no life. You throw the stun out, the other player basically stops moving if the stun grenade hits like right on target. You toss your knife out, you get the kill most of the time and bada bing bada boom you restock you go back at it again but 
Let's be honest, most of the time the Riot Shield users aren't winning games, so I wouldn't really follow that method. I'm going to go with Frag Grenade, I think, next, and that is purely because the average skilled player isn't very good at using them. Most players want to be able to either one and done something, such as a Claymore or a Proximity Mine, and never have to worry about it again, or they don't want to have to actually hold the timer on the grenade, figure out the timing on when to throw and release, and figure out how to bounce off walls, how to make sure the grenade goes where they want it to go which is why the Semtex is so much better to most players. I'm gonna go ahead and put the Frag Grenade next. I wanna honestly say that the Molotov is kind of sleeper pick. It's got a lot of utility. I think most people don't use it because of its weak damage as opposed to the others as far as vehicles go. But really, if you're in a regular fight, the Molotov is like a dumbed down version of the Thermite, which is my personal favorite that we'll get into here in a sec. The Molotov is pretty useful in that if you are approaching a fight, or if you are mid-fight, or if you are looking to end a fight, it still maintains its use. The only other ones in the game that do that are Frag Grenade, C4, Semtex, Thermite. The reason why the other three are so bottom tier is because their use is only normally ever, just like outside of the fight. Sometimes you can start a fight, but you never see anybody like get a down and go, oh man, I'm gonna go put a claymore on him. Anyways, Molotov really good for blocking doorways, for finishing down players, basically just for controlling the map or controlling the building that you're fighting in. Moving on, it's a really tough one for me, but because I love the Thermite so much, we're gonna go C4 next. C4 used to be by far and away the god tier of all lethals in that you could toss it up into a window you get your massive splash damage you can throw these things like you used to be able to throw them high into the sky do whatever you want with them they were super versatile you could throw them super far massive damage you could start a fight you could end a fight you could finish it down with them super useful in all aspects of the game nowadays not as crazy they basically just reduced the throw distance and i think they added some time on the detonation but really, these things are still good. You can still make great use of them. They are still, by far and away, the most effective on vehicles. Even though Thermite is my favorite and my most used, I'm going to go ahead and put it second second best because the, the Semtex is just too damn good, in my opinion. I wouldn't say nerf it. I'm just saying it's the best in the game. Thermite's really cool because it is kind of a mix of all things that you love. You can throw them really far. You can throw them really fast. You can stick them onto walls, you can stick them onto targets, you can block entryways, doorways, you can stick them onto vehicles and do massive damage, you can stick them onto a vehicle and it will damage the player themselves rather than the vehicle, which is always great. The Thermite, if used properly and if hit consistently, does massive damage, especially over time, which is great for players that are looking to either regen their health or put plates back on. But where it lacks is that if you throw a thermite and it's even remotely close but not quite close enough, there is hardly any splash damage, meaning you have to be pretty godly accurate with them, which turns off the average player because, let's be real, in the middle of a fight, I'm sweating, you know, you're not going to be the most accurate guy, you're not going to be thinking on your toes like that of, exactly where do I place this thermite, do I have enough time to line up my shot, things like that. Which brings us to the one, the only, the Semtex Grenade, aka the Sticky Grenade. Yes, it does have a timer, but the timer does not start until thrown. The Semtex is just great overall. You can throw it really far, you can stick it to any surface, if it's remotely close to the target or in the window, in the doorway of the building you're looking to attack, you're gonna get some splash damage off. Of course, you can stick these to any kind of vehicle. You can stick them to a player who can then bring that explosion to his fellow teammates. Semtexes are just amazing. Uh, I, I'm honestly strongly considering switching to them just because where they really outshine the Thermite is if somebody is behind a 
helpless behind some sort of head glitch or cover like a rock and there's nothing behind them that you can stick your thermite to, you're basically stuck with the option of trying to stick them in the head with it or throwing it to the side of them and hoping it hits. Whereas with the Semtex, it's much, it's much easier to throw said Semtex behind the target to the side of the target onto the target onto anything near the target because the splash damage is just so much higher and more beneficial but yeah that pretty much covers our lethals i honestly want to say the frag grenade is kind of slept on along with the cocktail but you're gonna to have to really practice with those if you are a i don't know average to below average player A little coffee break one time. Let's go over to the tacticals. The tacticals is where it gets really interesting. There are some dead weight uh, products we got going on here, but such as life, I guess, especially in Warzone, there's a bunch of use unuseful shit, useless shit, I guess I should say. We're going to rank them again. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight options you got here. And by far and away, the one that I have never seen anybody use in a loadout ever in the history of my life is the decoy grenade. I honestly think it used to be a lot worse in that it was always the same sound and it didn't even sound like a gun. It sounded like somebody was shaking a rock inside of a tin can. And the main problem with the decoy grenade is that number one, it needs some, it needs to be able to, it's almost as if you when you throw it out, if it kept like slowly rolling and then shooting every once in a while, it would be more believable. Or maybe give it the sound of a silencer, but don't have it go off on the map to make teams believe that there's actually a living, breathing human over there rather than this piece of garbage. They did change it, I believe, so that it puts out different gunshot sounds. But the problem with the decoy grenade primarily is that if you hear it, the second you come to understand that it is a decoy grenade, that tactical is done. There is no use for it at all anymore. Outside of that, you're really only using it either to start a fight or to distract so that you can get out of a fight. There's no potential in this really mid fight or making your fight easier while you're actually trying to kill other players, which is why it's pretty trash after decoy grenade it was kind of tough for me to decide but i think i'm gonna have to go stim and you might be thinking i know i know you might be thinking well what about the uh, stim glitch where you can live forever and run through the storm uh again if you're one of those people uh i unfortunately have to say go for it because call of duty's not going to punish you just know that we all know that you probably suck your dad off from the back, and that's just that on that. In all reality, the stim is not absolutely terrible. I guess if you get your armor cracked and somebody gets some shots off on you and you're trying to get away, great, go ahead and get that health back quicker than the typical five second regen period. Where the stim actually comes in handy, is if you find one on the ground, you're stuck in the gas, you're trying to get out, you're low health, you stim up, you barely get out of there because it gives you a speed boost on top of that. But other than that, you're not, you're not using this, let's be honest. Even if you had dead silence and you have the speed boost from that and you stim and you go super saiyan mode, it's just not worth it compared to the other ones. We're gonna move on. Again, it was another tough decision, but I'm gonna have to go snapshot grenade. If anybody has been around during the early days of the AS Val, you know that the snapshot grenade was pretty god tier at the time, but that is only because there was a gun in the game that could wallbang any surface from any distance at any time with like no damage drop off and no bullet velocity drop off. Like, it was insane. But the problem is, because Warzone hasn't implemented a system or been transparent with a system of what is actually wall bang a bull in the game, nobody knows when the snapshot's, snapshot is actually gonna come into handy. The only time you see it used is again, if it is found off of a random crate or off of a random drop, you toss it out there because you're like, hey, maybe it'll get me some free information. 
But other than that, it's not going to help you out a whole lot. Again, just like the stim, just like the decoy, you're really not using any, you're not using this to end a fight, potentially end a fight. It does give you some form of information, but if you're already in the fight and you're in a building, you pretty much know where your enemies are at. You don't need to know pinpoint exactly because most buildings don't have a whole lot of wall bangable material, especially if you're on different levels, like a, a first and a second floor. We're gonna move on. The smoke grenade gets a bad rap. I think it should be maybe rated a little higher than I put it, but I don't know just because nobody uses it. This game is just too much of a joke to actually pretend like you need to be tactical enough to use the smoke grenade. Of course, you can find great use in uh, cover and getting out of difficult situations. But again, you're never going to use this to open up a fight, to end a fight. You're really only using this to either get cover so that you can get close enough to your fight to start it or you're throwing it so that you can get the hell out of dodge or just dodge a sniper in the distance it just doesn't stack up compared to uh, the next four or three that I'm going to talk about next up we have the gas grenade the gas grenade I don't even think should be rated as high as it is but because the rest of them are so damn bad I had to do it I would never use the gas grenade in solos because unfortunately for the gas grenade, if you hit a target with said gas grenade and then you push in, the gas is still lingering and for some reason the gas affects you as well. So it's almost as if you are, I don't know, screwing yourself over. If you toss your gas grenade, you can start a fight with it, great, but the only time it really comes in handy when starting a fight is if you have a teammate you can call out, hey, I'm going to gas grenade second story. And then you say, hey, I got a hit on that. Go ahead and push it. The problem is you cannot push it with him until the gas is gone. Because for some reason, your gas just like totally murders your vision and your aim. You can't really use a gas grenade to end a fight. You can use it mid fight, but it's difficult because if you are at a close range, you're putting yourself at risk of basically dying to RNG because you don't know when the gas is going to affect you and when it won't. That's another problem with the gas grenade is that sometimes it clips through walls and it hurts you. It's really weird. That brings us to basically our only three that you ever see used the cream of the crop. I'm going to go ahead and put flash grenade as third best. Flash grenade is really useful in a lot of fights, especially if you have one teammate using restock or uh, you just have a lot of ammo boxes or if you just really like pushing buildings in general if you have a flash grenade it never hurts to open up the fight with a flash grenade toss that monkey in there maybe you blind the whole team maybe you blind one guy maybe the guy that you blind just so happens to be watching the staircase or the doorway that you need to push through he all of a sudden is an easy kill he all of a sudden cannot relay information to his team pretty useful uh, mid fight just as useful as opening fight the problem is with flash grenade i don't really understand them yet and i have used them quite a lot there for some reason you either completely fill the enemy's screen with white or you put yourself at risk of getting that hit marker on them and you think that they're flash but in reality it's almost as if somebody like took one of those wind-up cameras and took a little picture of them and then they were like it almost puts them at an advantage because I have found that if I get flashed and it doesn't really affect me my brain automatically goes to the mindset of oh my god this guy thinks I'm flashed so maybe I'll just keep aiming down sight on whatever I'm looking at or I'll switch my position up because he thinks that I don't know where I'm at and then all of a sudden the gunfight is turned completely in your favor I would argue to make the flash grenade a little stronger but that being said, if they increase the radius on it at all, it's just going to end up flashing entire teams and people are going to end up running eight flash grenades on one team. We're going to move on to the stun grenade. I do put it below the heartbeat sensor. I'll tell you why after this. Stun grenade is my favorite in the game by far. I recently just started using them a lot more. Got a pretty sick gameplay with them. I think I put it out yesterday, so if you want to check that out, it's called... Warzone, but I'm Kendrick Lamar. Pretty dope gameplay. I use the Sun Grenade quite often. 
If you want to learn how to use stun grenades better, go ahead and check out Metaphor on YouTube or Twitch TV. Uh, I really only started using stun grenades because I saw him start using them. Stun grenades are just super versatile and they're super consistent. If you get a hit marker with a stun grenade, you kind of uh, slow enemy movement and uh, it's just the amount and the amount of time that it actually takes for you to get your whereabouts back is pretty amazing, especially if you have two stun grenades on you or maybe you have a teammate that runs them as well in quads and you can just absolutely counter enemy movement. You can figure out where they're at based off of when the stun grenade hits and makes impact. Making your enemy target unable to move just allows you to absolutely burn them down, whether it be from a distance with a sniper, whether it be close range with any other kind of gun, or honestly, whether they be in a building or not, let's say they're top floor, you throw the stun grenade in, you get a fat hit marker, you're telling your teammates, toss your nades, toss your molotovs, toss your anything you got because these guys cannot move and unless they have a trophy, which you already know they don't because you baited it out with said stun grenade, you're going to get massive damage, which is going to lead to a better gunfight for you and your teammates. The only reason why I put the heartbeat sensor above the stun grenades is because at the end of the day, the heartbeat sensor is always going to be useful. Maybe end game it's not as useful, but because there are noobs in every game you play, somebody's going to think I don't have to run ghost. Just like me, I normally don't run ghost. I, I run restock nowadays, especially in solos. The heartbeat sensor, it's just always free information. Even if you pull it out and it doesn't show anything on radar, you have that peace of mind saying, there's probably not anybody here. Yes, they could have a ghost, but odds are, unless it's end game, they do not. Whatever's in front of you is in the clear. You can go ahead and push forward. If for some reason somebody does show up on your heartbeat sensor, you can then all of a sudden tune into that location, figure out where they're at. If you have ghost on, they don't know where you're at. It's just super useful. Uh, to begin a fight, you know how many teammates you're up against most of the time, unless for some reason a team runs like three guys with Ghost and one guy without, then you're really screwed. But honestly, the amount of free information this gives you at all time is just unparalleled. I don't really know how to fix it at this point. I made the argument of putting in Cold Blooded as the perk that will get you off the heartbeat sensor rather than Ghost. I don't think you should be rewarded so much just for running one perk, but I mean, hey, that's just me. This video is running kind of long, so uh, if anybody just wanted to know where I rank these on the little tiers or whatever, you're good to go. But if you want to know what you should be using based off of your playstyle, I'll go over that really, really quick. If you are a long range gunfight player, I would almost always use the heartbeat sensor, which will allow you to maintain your distance. If you are a close range primarily player, I would almost always take the stun grenade. And if you're more of a medium range gunner, you're kind of open to a lot of different things here, but I still would encourage you to take either the stun, maybe the gas grenade to help your team out. You don't really need the heartbeat sensor because you're not going to be close enough. I know it sounds weird being a long range player having the heartbeat sensor, but if you truly prioritize long range gunfights, you're going to want the heartbeat sensor to see if somebody's nearby. You can maybe back up or go higher, increase your distance, and then start your fight. As far as lethals go, close range, I don't think it's even close. It's got to either be C4 or Semtex. Yes, run the thermite if you think you are pretty up there and you know how to handle it. Just keep in mind that thermites actually do a lot of damage to yourself if you run anywhere near them. So if you use them for a finish and you're low on health, you put yourself at risk of downing yourself, which is pretty embarrassing. I have done it a ton of times. Um, if you are a medium range player, the frag grenade is really, really good. The Semtex is really, really good. And this is where I would mostly use the thermite. You can cut off doorways for your close range teammates. You can get massive splash damage with Semtex and frag grenade. It's just an all around help. And then lastly, if you're a long range player, you really really only need to be using frag semtex sure i guess if you want to cover your back and you don't want your teammates to worry about you 
Go ahead and use that claymore, you giant nerd. But other than that, you really don't have many options. And uh, with that, with me saying that it's going to be a short video, and now it's a 25 minute long video, I'm going to let you guys go because I'm sick and tired of nerding out. Maybe you guys are tired too. I will see you guys in the next one. I'm not quite sure what I want to go over, but I'm sure I'll find something. Have a good one. I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.